bookchat.com and welcome to episode 90. Today on Book Chat, I'm talking with author Deborah Blake. Deborah is the author of the Baba Yaga series from Berkeley Romance and urban fantasy series Veiled Magic, as well as nine nonfiction titles. All of Deborah's social media links are below in the show notes, so if you'd like to connect to her, you know where to find her. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and share it. Show your support by rating the podcast and leaving a positive review on iTunes. The podcast can also be found on the Spreaker app, YouTube, Google Play Music, the Stitcher app, and more. Want to comment on something you've heard during today's episode? You can leave a comment or you can find me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com. Today's episode is sponsored by Reading Until Dawn Con, a small con where you get to play with the authors who keep you up all night. Join MC, New York Times bestselling author Larissa Ion for games like Are You Smarter Than a Fictional Character and Dirty Pictionary. Reading Until Dawn Con will be on June 3rd, 2017 in Denver, Colorado. Tickets are limited, so grab yours today. The registration link is below in the show notes. See you in Denver. Hey, Deborah, thank you so much for joining me this evening. And we're going to be talking all about your new release and Witches in Fantasy. Let's get excited. Are you excited to talk about Witches? I'm very excited to talk about Witches. Yes, I love Witches in Fantasy. Personally, I love fantasy. So this is perfect that you're here because it's like my favorite genre ever. Well, and I like witches and I like fantasy. So it's both sort of a real life thing and a book reading thing. Yeah. And for you, well, so you like to read them, you like to write it. And so it's all all around for you, huh? Uh, And I live it actually, because I I am a witch. Shh, don't tell anyone. You're a witch for real? I am. Yes, I'm a, a, you know, most people know us as Wiccans, but yes, I'm, I, I, that's part of where the witches come from in my books, actually, is I started out writing nonfiction books for Llewellyn about witches and sort of segued into my fiction work because, you know, they say, write what you know, and I know witches. Oh, that's very cool. So when it comes to witches in fiction and fantasy, Let's talk a little bit about good and bad witches. I mean, you know, they always give you this idea that, you know, a good witch looks like Glenda and a bad witch looks like the opposite. Um, Is there like a real clear line with good and bad witches? What do you think about that? Well, I I think to some extent it depends on the author in the book. Um, Veiled Menace, which is the second book in the Veiled Magic series, that witch is mostly good i mean she's a witch cop so she has to come down on the side of law and order although Mm -hmm. as the as the series progresses she she you know realizes there's some shades of gray she might not have seen before Mm -hmm. but my baba yaga series which is also from berkeley now those witches are a little bit more you know neither good nor evil mostly sort of you know whatever works right (laughs) Well, I have to admit, I don't mind a lot of gray when it comes to characters, only because, you know, in real life, a person isn't all good or all bad. So I kind of think it's the same when it comes to witches or any paranormal being, really. Yeah. I, I mean, I love Glenda. She's wonderful. She's a little boring. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the witches who have a little bit of an edge to them possibly slightly more interesting yeah they're fun to read and dare i say they may be a little bit more feminist (laughs) well and and let's face it most human beings are neither good nor evil they you know they mostly try and walk the line the best they can but maybe veer in one direction or another and if your witch character is realistic then probably she, or I suppose he, uh, you know, is pretty much the same, mostly trying to do whatever she feels is right, Mm -hmm. but occasionally having to cross the line and do what works. Right. So, yeah. So tell me about the witches in your current series, in the Veiled Magic series. The book we're talking about right now, which is coming out in mid-April, is Veiled Menace, which is the second book in the series. And in the first book, which was Veiled Magic, you met Donata, who Donata Centauri, who is a a witch cop. In this particular world, it's mostly like our world, except that you know, of course, there's these magical beings that you know are are you know existing that 
maybe you're, maybe are in ours, maybe they they aren't. Uh, in in her universe, um, it's a little bit further down the line time wise, and witches have come out of the broom closet, and there's other paranormal creatures who have not yet shown themselves but of course the witches like to not know about them mm-hmm. and it's not I, I tried really hard to create a world that was not the standard um werewolf vampire you know i mean i have some fae but they're a little bit different i have shifters but they're they're not werewolves they're actually ulfidnar which is a norse kind of berserker shifter okay. and um, that gets to be fun uh and there's dragon you know people so i you know i tried to do something a little bit different and the you know the witches in in this book have you know come out and they're doing sort of st- sort of helpful jobs in society like there's ones who can predict stock stock changes which you know i could use one of those myself Me too <laughs> um, yeah and healers yeah you because know, witches do healing and then there's witch cops like the protect who she's actually what they they call a um a ghost yanker that's the sort of slang term she's actually a uh a witness uh person what she does is she talks to the one witness in the crime that you usually don't get to talk to which is the dead victim Mm -hmm. so she talks to she basically talks to dead people um but that's you know that's part of her job and she's helpful that way only you know in the course of things she's gotten into all sorts of paranormal shenanigans Mm -hmm. uh for for lack of a better word, and by the time we get to book two, which is Veiled Menace, um, she gets pulled into even more complicated shenanigans. Okay, so it sounds like she's definitely a fun character to write about because she's got so much going on. Well, she is. You know, she's she tries very hard to do her job well. Doesn't get along well with her family because. You know, they want her to to do something more dignified than being a witch cop. You know, they would much rather have her you know, do do like the healing thing or something. And her boss, who's a human, you know, the chief at the station where she works, doesn't really understand what exactly she's doing. Although she's he's willing to work with it. So yeah, she's she's treading a very fine line, trying to um, you know have a life that works for her. And then there's the men. Yeah, oh, they're the just men. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the end of Veiled Magic, was, which was the first book, mm-hmm. she had two love interests, both of whom disappeared. They basically went back to deal with their own things. There was Peter, who was the half dragon, half human. And then there was Magnus, who was one of these Ulfidnar. And they just disappeared on her and so veiled magic is six months later and she's dating this very nice well millionaire kind of businessman Mm -hmm. only problem is he's not exactly what he seems Mm, they never are they never are they never are those millionaire businessmen my goodness if only they were more dependable right well it's a good thing she's a very she sounds like a strong witch rather you know one that can you know look out for herself and handle she's very business. Tough. Yeah. That's one of the things that I like about this character. You know, she's not just a witch, she's a cop. So mm-hmm. she kicks butt. Mm-hmm. Now Which let me ask mean this. She's not vulnerable, but you know, she's, she's pretty good. Well, that's cool. Well, let me ask this question. So is she one of those cops? You know how sometimes people do bad things in the interest of, doing something good in the end is she is she you know you mentioned she kind of has i guess questionable things but she never crosses the line really i mean do you think that's something that could happen in the future it's sort of interesting because that happens in this book the first book veiled magic she was pretty much a toe the line black or white you know this is the right or this is the wrong thing in this second book she gets some challenges where she realizes it's not that simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and so, yeah, maybe she has to veer a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to give too many spoilers, mm-hmm. but 
But you know, she ends up breaking some of her own rules. I love that. Like I said, I love a character that has some conflict, you know, one that is really multifaceted. So they're not all good. They're not all bad, but they may be working the best interest of trying to do good, even though they do some bad things. I don't mind that at all. I actually enjoy it. And that's, you know, her thing is she, she has these very high ideals for herself, both as a witch and as a cop. But sometimes when those ideals meet reality, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they don't quite hold up. So, yes, she's that's one of her challenges in this book is that she she sometimes finds out that following the rules doesn't just cut it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So do you think this type of character, you know, the one with a little bit of gray and some contradicting, you know, thoughts on things is more fun to write than like um let's say the character in your other series the the leading witch in your other series how is she different how is oh, it actually funner? the the the, the bobby yagas and there are three of them and and they're all very different the first one barbara she she loves gray <laughs> she as far as she's concerned and mind you this is a different kind of witch the Baba Yagas are these Russian um, fairy tale witches and these stories all take part in our actual world but the Baba Yagas in Russian fairy tales were neither good nor evil they basically you know it sort of depended on how you approached them you know they they might be very nice to you they might stick your head on a post Uh, Mm -hmm. you know you better be polite right and and those Baba Yagas, they had a different set of right and wrong. Donata in this book, she's more likely to have the kind of ideas of right and wrong that you and I have. Okay. Whereas the Baba Yagas in the other books are a little bit more, you know, it's not that they don't see black and white or gray. They basically follow their own rules and the human rules have very little to do with it. Ah, which was which was a lot of fun to write too. Yeah, you know, it was one of the reasons that I loved those characters is because they were not good witches or evil witches, that because it didn't even fall in those parameters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. Well, I think Donata is more. Um, I guess, like you said, she's kind of realistic to real worlds, I guess, you know, realistic in that this maybe it just seems more relatable to like, I don't know, contemporary Us. fiction, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's sort of funny, because even though her world is more of an urban fantasy, slightly different from the, our reality world, as a character, I think she is very much like any contemporary character with superpowers um in in that she struggles with the same kind of things we struggle with she has family issues she's Mm -hmm. got relationship issues Mm -hmm. she's trying to do her best at her job and often feels like she's you know failing a little bit which i think are all things that everybody can relate to even when there's supernatural things involved Mm mm-hmm we, you know, we may not be able to do magic, but we understand what it's like to struggle as a woman in society. Mm-hmm. Well, with you saying that it's kind of uh, relatable to real world, are there some heavily magical moments in the book where it's just like, this is totally non-real? <laughs> you know, are there some exciting well, it's a- Magic. It depends if if you're if you're a witch, you're thinking, oh yeah, I did that last week. No, oh. just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously there's paranormal things and there's magical things because you know it's that kind of book. Mm-hmm. I hope that I've written them in such a way that they're believable for this world. There are certainly things that you would not expect to happen in the reality that we're aware of. There. There are some kind of freaky things. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are definitely some magical things that are you know, beyond um, the the magic that I would do, which is more like doing you know, prosperity magic or you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's you know, there's definitely that paranormal urban fantasy element. There are there are places where where you're going to know you are not in the real world. Let's put it that way. That's awesome. I love that kind of stuff. So 
I do. Actually, I think I'll be reading this series. It is right up my alley for real. So obviously this new book just came out yesterday. Yes. So April 18th. Yeah. Now tell me, do you think that people could jump into the new title, um, Veiled Menace, without reading book one? Or do you definitely recommend they go back and read Veiled Magic first? Well, it'll be easier if they read the first one. But I try and write you know, any book that I write, um, I try and make it so that anybody, you know, can can step into it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's definitely easier if you have read the, the first one. Um, I mean, it's it is designed so that you could pick this one up and it will not throw you completely. I, I try that to do that with all of my books because, you know, I have picked up books and read them out of order. And, you know, sometimes there's that little bit of confusion, but, uh, you know, there's, you know, I, I try and make it clear enough so that in theory you could pick up this one, fall in love with it and go back and read the first one. Okay. So you give us a little bit of, you know, history yeah. without making yeah. us you know relive the whole thing so people yeah, can jump I, in and I understand do, i try not to do the info dump yeah no, <laughs> you know, it's the babe it's that is the trickiest thing about writing you know the next book in a series is you want to give people the information they need in case they haven't read the ones before that but you also don't want to have people going Oh, look, she's just recapped the previous book. Right. So, you know, hopefully I've, you know, I've had places where if you were really lost, Mm -hmm. you were, you were going to be able to pick it all up. There's no reason you can't read this one first. Awesome. Okay. So look, since we're talking about witches and fantasy, I would love to hear a couple of books that you've read that you really enjoyed that had witches as the, the main characters. Well, you know, there's a, there's a couple of different kinds of I mean I happen to like the what they call light paranormal romance mm-hmm. um Mindy Klasky wrote a series about a librarian who just dis- discovered there was this secret witch library in the back of the building and you know, it was trained as a librarian and those were a blast or the modern modern girl's guide to witchcraft mm. um oh yeah and um and uh, let's see, uh, there there were some really neat, you know, Yasmin Gailnorn wrote some re- a really great witchcraft series. They're more urban fantasy, sort of dark, gritty, serious kind of things. You know, the truth is I've read like a zillion books with witches in them because uh-huh. I do like that. Right. It's sort of hard to pick, you know, the favorite. I also really like... Um, uh, historical fiction, you know, paranormal, which I, I don't normally do historical, but um, the, it was called Sorcery and Cecilia. And Ooh. it was, yeah, oh, it was lovely. I like that it's, name. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's a British kind of thing. And it's, it's set back in the, you know, they talk about, you know, the, the Victorian era or whatever it was. And it was so clever. I I think it was a YA, but you know it's very very good for anybody. You know, I I actually read a lot of. I mean, you want to talk about books with witches in them? Harry Potter. Love uh, Harry Potter. Oh yes, Harry Potter is like a classic, right? It really is. And you know, there's a lot of books that I read that, in theory, are marketed as young adult, mm-hmm. and I don't care. I mean, you want to talk about interesting books with witches and go back a while um madeline langle they're really well-known books um they even did a couple of like made for tv movies for them and it wasn't witchcraft magic exactly it was just magic Mm, and mm -hmm. i like anything i like anything that's got magical elements whether it's fantasy or paranormal romance or you know any of those kind of things you know there's a lot of different ways to approach magic and i like them all tanya huff did this series that started with the magical emporium oh my god those books are great you know what i've heard of that i've heard of those books but i have not read them oh you want to they're 
They are among my favorite books ever written by anybody ever. Really? Well, that well, says a lot. There, yes. There's, there's this, there's this shop that's got all these magical things in it. And then there's this quirky family full of people who can work magic of various different kinds. Some of it sort of elemental and there's all these secrets. Oh boy. Do you want to read that book? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to add it to my TBR. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's three in the series so far and I keep urging her to write more because I just love those. Okay. Well, I've definitely added those and everyone, Deborah gave us some really great suggestions. So from the expert, she is the expert when it comes to witches and fantasy. So definitely pick up a few of her suggestions and her books. But guess what? If you haven't read this series, book one, we have a fun giveaway for you. You want to share what that is, Deborah? We are going to give away a copy of the first book. And a copy of the second book. They're, they're available as ebooks only, but I will give away, um, a, an ebook copy. You know, I can do it through Amazon. If you don't have Amazon, I'm sure we can figure out something. Um, so one copy of Veiled Magic and one copy of Veiled Menace, the new one. You know, hopefully you can get caught up in the series and fall in love with it. Yeah. So you guys, there is a link in the show notes. Feel free to click the raffle copter link and enter as many ways as you want to. And the giveaway will be open for one week and then the winner will get both of those awesome titles. So good luck. Okay. Is there anything else, Deborah, you'd like to share about uh, this series or what you're working on next or Heck, when's the new book? When's the next book for this series coming out? I'm actually writing the next book for this series as we speak. Um, it's I'm not exactly sure when it comes out, but I do have sort of a crazy release schedule for the rest of this year. In September, I have the next Baba Yaga novella coming out from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. In October, I have my next uh, witchcraft book from Llewellyn coming out, which is the Everyday Witch uh, book, 365 Days of Everyday Witchcraft, um, which is sort of a devotional slash, you know, one thing a day kind of book. Mm -hmm. And then in November, the much awaited uh, second writer's book that, you know, the writers are an offshoot from the Baba Yaga books The they were companions for the Baba Yagas. And they're hunky guys, not that anybody cares out there, right? <laughs> um, and so the the first one of the books, which was Dangerously Charming, came out in October. And so people have been waiting since October for the second book, which is going to be Dangerously Divine. And that will be coming out in November. So, yeah, come come fall, I'm going to be a busy little author. Yes, it sounds like it. Um, if you guys want to follow and be in the know when all these different titles come out, be sure to follow Deborah. All of her links are below in the show notes so you can follow her on Twitter and connect with her on Facebook, on her Facebook page and all that fun stuff so you don't miss any of these titles. That would be tragic. It would be tragic. So go ahead and connect below. <laughs> Click those well, links. And, you know, I, I do all sorts of, you know, giveaways and fun things on my blog and Facebook, you know, when any book comes out. So, you know, if you follow me, you will get to you know, being on all that good stuff. Awesome. Okay. Well, that I think we're done. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off this evening? Thank you for having me here and to thank all of my readers and my potential readers. Um, because, you know, an, an author is only as good as her, you know, next book that everybody yells for. So, you know, I really, really appreciate my readers who are enthusiastic about my work and, you know, put up wonderful reviews and say, oh, please do another one. Readers rock. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And always, it's always fun. Hopefully you will come back again sometime soon. And uh, well, maybe sometime between that September, October, November crazy period, we can find some time to do something. Sounds like a plan. So absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Thank you so much for listening, streaming, downloading, all that fun stuff. And I will see you on the next book chat i guess you want to say goodbye to people thank you <laughs> goodbye people <laughs> thanks guys
Thank you for tuning in and downloading today's episode. If you are enjoying the book chat episodes and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. First, you can head on over to iTunes and give a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. You can follow the Shelf Addiction podcast on Spreaker, the only place where you can listen live and get broadcast notifications so that you never miss a live episode. Most importantly, you can share the podcast with friends and family that love books and audiobooks. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.